Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Brainstormer of the Week. This is Brainstormer 7 uh, and we are going to look at the paravertebral space anatomy question that we asked you last week. The question was, while performing thoracic paravertebral block, the loss of resistance uh, to which structure marks the entry of the needle into the paravertebral space and the options given to you were the intertransverse ligament, the superior costal transverse ligament, lateral costal transverse ligament and posterior intercostal membrane. Well the answer is superior costal transverse ligament. Let's have a closer look at the paravertebral space uh, and its anatomy and get to know why that might be so. So uh, paravertebral space essentially is a space that lies lateral to each vertebral level. Uh, if we have a look at the thoracic vertebrae, uh, all the vertebrae uh, uh, consist of an anterior vertebral body and a posterior neural arch. Uh, this posterior neural arch constitutes two lateral transverse processes uh, and a median spinous process, whereas the spinal cord lies between these two structures. Uh, the spinal cord, uh, in addition, gives at each level a ventral nerve root and a dorsal nerve root. The dorsal nerve root also has a dorsal nerve root ganglion. Uh, these two nerve roots combine to form the segmental spinal nerve that moves laterally through the paravertebral space uh, into the intercostal space. Uh, it then divides into a dorsal ramus and a ventral ramus. The dorsal ramus comes posteriorly uh, and divides into a lateral and a medial branch whereas the ventral ramus continues laterally into the intercostal space uh, coming in relationship uh, with the intercostal muscles. Uh, and at each level there are three intercostal muscles, the internal intercostal, uh, the external intercostal and the intercostal muscle that lies uh, deep most which is the innermost intercostal muscle. Uh, the Intercostal nerve lies between the innermost and the internal intercostal muscle as shown here whereas the external intercostal muscle lies outside these structures. In addition what we also need to know is where does the lung lie in relationship uh, with the paravertebral space and it lies deeper. Uh, the lung uh, is bounded by uh, the pleura which has two layers. Uh, here we are showing uh, the uh, two layers of the pleura, one in dotted line being the uh, visceral layer and one in solid blue line being the parietal layer of the pleura. What's important to know is depending upon the angulation of the needle, a certain approach uh, can result uh, the needle tip facing uh, perpendicularly in relationship to the pleura and increase the chances of pneumothorax and that's quite important to know. Uh, there are other structures that are equally important to know. Uh, shown here in the pink dotted line uh, is the uh, endothoracic fascia. The endothoracic fascia is continuation of the deep layer of the thoracic fascia uh, in the thorax and essentially it separates the paravertebral space into two different components. More posteriorly shown here uh, is the posterior intercostal membrane. Uh, this membrane connects the internal intercostal uh, muscle with the transverse process and its tip uh, or the lateral part of the transverse process at each level. Additionally, there are other uh, ligaments present uh, connecting the transverse process and the rib at each level uh, and they are uh, generally the superior costal transverse ligament shown here and the lateral costal transverse ligament a bit posteriorly. Uh, the important thing to know is that the lateral costal transverse ligament uh, lies at the level of the transverse process and therefore when you are trying to do a paravertebral uh, block you generally do not encounter the uh, lateral costal transverse ligament. On the other hand uh, the superior costal transverse ligament uh, extends from the rib at each level to the transverse process above and again constitutes of two slips anterior and posterior 
uh, and it's important to know that that forms the posterior boundary of the paravertebral space. The endothoracic fascia divides the paravertebral space into two parts. Uh, one shown here that lies between uh, the pleura lying deeper and the endothoracic fascia. This is called extra pleural paravertebral space. Uh, and the one that lies most superficial between the endothoracic fascia and the paravertebral uh, space main per se bounded by transverse process here. Uh, and that is called the sub endothoracic paravertebral space component. The reason I'm explaining that is because the sympathetic chain extends posteriorly uh, and lies between uh, the endothoracic fascia and the pleura, uh, essentially in the extra pleural paravertebral space. And when you dump in a large volume of local anesthetic, it generally spreads deeper resulting in a sympathetic block as well. Um, if you uh, put in smaller uh, volume of uh, local anesthetic, then it may confine itself to the submidothoracic paravertebral space only, resulting in predominantly a somatic uh, block. Also, uh, what's important to notice here is that uh, depending upon the angulation of the needle, uh, of the needle, uh, uh, whether you're doing a landmark uh, block or uh, if you're doing an ultrasound guided block, uh, you could uh, pierce different structures. So in a paramedian plane, uh, when you insert the needle uh, in a classical landmark approach or uh, in an ultrasound guided approach when you're keeping your uh, probe uh, paramedian, uh, you would generally pierce the superior costal transverse ligament, which extends between the two uh, uh, sub you know, uh, uh, con consecutive transverse processes. But if you're uh, doing an ultrasound guided approach uh, with your probe in transverse position, bringing your needle um, laterally to medially, then you may not pierce the superior costal transverse ligament uh, and in fact pierce the posterior intercostal membrane. So to summarize, uh, paravertebral space uh, is a wedge-shaped space uh, with the lungs lying anterolateral to it and the vertebra and the spinal segmental nerve lying posterior to it. The block uh, performed in paravertebral space results in a unilateral segmental spread and this might be a combination of somatic and a sympathetic spread. So it's very important to know that the superior costal transverse ligaments bounds the paravertebral space posteriorly and loss of resistance to this ligament marks the entry of the needle uh, in the paravertebral space and that this block may be performed either using landmark or ultrasound. So that's it folks for this week. If you did like this podcast, then I request you to share it with your friends on Facebook or Twitter. It's your uh, feedback that keeps uh, me going. Uh, you can also subscribe to the website by using uh, uh, RSS feeds provided on the website. And you can now also subscribe to our monthly newsletter. Uh, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Herman Sembi 29. So thank you very much for watching this. Uh, this has been a presentation of regionalfortrainees.com. Tune into learning. See you next week. Bye.